It's a lot of opportunities in the stock market right now, a whole lot of opportunities. And we've heard of a few opportunities today, but we're going to talk about a growth stock that you guys should probably put in your portfolio. And then we're going to follow up with some coronavirus stocks that you should be taking a look at. Here Let's talk about some growth stocks. This growth stock, you got to check it out. It's Farfetch'd. Ticker name is FTCH. There's a lot of growth stocks out there. This is e-commerce, and I feel like there is a ton of potential for the overall company to go up. If you guys don't know where Farfetch is, though I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys do know, it's pretty much a luxury goods seller. I mean, if you go on Farfetch.com right now, you're probably not going to be finding anything cheap. They usually sell very expensive designer stuff. I mean, if you guys have $1,000 to blow on some luxury clothing, you might as well blow it on Farfetch. They have a huge variety of different stuff. I mean, look at this Gucci shirt. It's $550. That's pretty absurd. That's literally my monthly rent in my apartment. And you also have like this Da Vinci shirt, which not gonna lie, looks kind of cool, which is nearly $1,000. But of course, Farfetch, once again, they sell luxury items, leather goods, shirts, sweaters, and they're really popular among the younger generation, especially if you're a hype beast, you're probably always on Farfetch trying to find the next cool thing. And Farfetch stock in the past week, it's been doing extremely well. In the past month, it's up 30%, whereas the rest of the NASDAQ is going down. The past five years, it's like a Taco Bell shape. At IPDO two years ago at $27, it dropped to a low point of $7, $8, which is a Travis Scott burger meal price. And then it went all the way up to $34 a share, which is pretty impressive. And this was all in a span of less than two years. And so far, Farfetch, I gotta admit, pretty big successes. It almost feels like the overall pandemic changed things a lot. Remember, during the pandemic, a lot of people weren't really shopping outside. If you want to hit up the Louis Vuitton or Gucci store, you're going to have to wait until a lockdown is lifted. And guess where people bought their stuff? You probably don't want to buy your luxury goods from eBay or Amazon. You want to buy it from somewhere that you know that's going to be authentic, which is Farfetch. This is why their sales recently have been going up. Even though the economy isn't really doing so well, luxury goods sales are still going up. The thing is, there's a lot of e-commerce sites out there that sell everyday products. You got Walmart, Amazon, Best Buy, they all sell the same things, kind of. Electronics, everyday products. But how many of these guys officially sell designer clothing? Not much, just Farfetch, kind of. And this, even though this industry is somewhat niche, but if Farfetch could somewhat dominate the whole entire market, they could get all the cash. Remember, luxury spending is on the rise. Just feels like, Kids these days, when they get a couple A's on their report card, they ask for like a Burberry shoe or like a pair of Yeezys. And China, nonetheless, huge consumer of luxury products. Jokes aside, they have money and they love luxury goods. And this is why Tencent, JD.com, Alibaba, investing so heavily in the overall company. Now, I feel like Farfetch, if they increase their revenue, if every single quarter they report good earnings, and if they report increased revenue in china their stock is going to absolutely surge remember there's no other company not like farfetch it's pretty unique like how etsy is super unique it's kind of like homemade goods and everyday sellers it's kind of like how amazon is pretty unique because they literally do you know everything like logistics streaming website e-commerce so farfetch is the perfect growth stock especially how yeah ladies and gentlemen i've been following and I, I own several of these um, websites that sell commerce. I own Shopify. I own Amazon. I own Big Commerce. Um, I don't own Alibaba. But let me tell you what the trend is with these stocks: hundred percent gains. I mean, just running the scoreboard up. All of them. All of them. And. This one is a great value because it hasn't taken that run up that the rest of them have taken. And I will highly encourage you guys to get some. And if you're interested in Corona stocks, today Pfizer announced that in the third round of their trial, they received a 90% effective rate in their vaccine. How big is that, ladies and gentlemen? The flu shot is only 50%. That's how big hmm. this is. Smallpox was 75%, and we got rid of smallpox. If they can keep this up, the economy is going to start turning out. People are going to start getting hyped again. But ladies and gentlemen, 
Now is the time to invest in your, your COVID stocks that are helping with the vaccine, such as Pfizer, such as Johnson & Johnson, such as a Merck, such as a Regeneron. Invest in those now. Don't worry about it. It's going to have ups and downs. Sit it away and just wait until they start passing out that vaccine. And you can also invest in the glass companies that make the valves for these because we need all that. We're in low demand on all that stuff. Then you can invest in the transportation companies that's going to have to deliver the vaccine at a pretty cold temperature. They're not going to be able to just deliver this thing in room temperature, ladies and gentlemen. There are some cryo delivery services out there you can invest in. Larry, which one of these do you have so that you can make sure that next year you come off like a fat cat? Man, I need to I need to move some stuff around because I have I have like I think I think my only pharmaceutical joint right now is um is Moderna. And I'm not feeling them right now. Just sit on it. No. Just sit on it. Just sit on it. So you well, can I was see. actually I was actually thinking of getting rid of Moderna and moving over to Pfizer or Johnson and Johnson. Okay. And sitting okay. on them. Okay. So yeah, that's that's a smart play. My Moderna has frustrated me in the past too. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna warn you guys about these pharmaceutical stocks, except for Johnson and Johnson. That's my favorite one of all of them because they pay a dividend. They'll be high on the news of something in a trial. And then after that, they just kind of wither really low. That's how yeah. they do, except yeah. for Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson goes up, keeps going up, and they pay a dividend, which is why most of my investment in all of these is in Johnson & Johnson, not just for the one-time boom of the COVID vaccine, but I also want to be getting some return on my money on a continuous monthly basis, and I like my stock to continue to grow. So Johnson right. & Johnson is my leader. That's the one that I have in my portfolio. You know, the thing that's interesting to me with some of these some pharmaceutical companies, even though I know that people are thinking, well, eventually the, the whole COVID thing will pass and people will be vaccinated in maybe a couple of years and then these stocks will start to trail off. But I think the thing that's interesting is that this research that they're doing is really is really expanding out the possibilities of what pharmaceuticals can do for other viruses and you have some viruses that we just have not conquered yet i mean hiv is still out there i know people don't always think about it because you know you can get hiv now and and take a regimen of drugs and it's it it's you know the the viral load is so low it doesn't show up in your system you can basically live like magic johnson if you have enough money and and, and health insurance you can basically live for you know like a regular life forever you know mm -hmm. But there's other things out there that cause, you know, there are viruses that that cause problems. You have stuff like, like herpes and and Ooh. and um and what's the other stuff that they've been vaccinating kids for? Um, HPV. Uh, HPV, and you know, and you have hepatitis and all these other sorts of uh, of viral uh, viral diseases that this sort of research that is, that is, that they've been working on, you know, this sort of research is, can help out. And some of the research that they've, some of the things that they've used to get to this COVID vaccine is stuff that they were actually using with, when they were looking for a, when they've been looking for a vaccine and looking for a cure for HIV, and when they've been looking for a cure and for a vaccine for Ebola. And so there's all kinds of other viruses out there that may be, you know, that may be affected by this. I, I, I'm not going to say that the the COVID vaccine is going to work on Ebola, but some of these practices and some of the things that they're doing may actually help find a cure for Ebola or help find a vaccine for Ebola. So, mm -hmm. you know. And by the well, way, ladies and gentlemen, it, it, it all plays out. Also by Farfetch, e-commerce, the rich people still have money. It's been a K-shaped recovery for the rich people. And they have been buying stuff up left and right. Get you some of that far-fetched stock. And now and it's not just rich people either. It's not even just rich people either. I was reading an article today, Lamont saying that that Americans are sitting on two plus trillion dollars of savings that from you know just from this whole just from this whole COVID thing because people haven't been able to go out. They're not going out and be like, you think about all these young kids that are that like I'm in I'm in the D.C. area. So I think about all these young kids that live in 
in D.C. that work up on the hill that are making $100,000, $120,000 a year, and they go out and blow you know, 100, 20, 200 bucks a night having drinks with their friends like it's nothing. They don't think about it because they're making a lot of money. Well, they can't do that anymore. They're not buying clothes. They're not out there buying drinks. They're not buying rest. They're not going out to restaurants. They're going on freaking video dates instead of taking people out on, on regular dates. So there's a lot of money being saved. And eventually people are going to come off of it. They're going to spend. Get you some far fetched, ladies and gentlemen.